The 333 is a utility module that sums and distributes audio signals and CVs. The audio treatment at the summing stages is directly borrowed from the CGM family, so it offers a professional audio quality. It consists of three identical sections labeled in red, yellow and green. Each section consists of three inputs and three outputs. The three inputs accepts audio and CV signals and sum them together. The three outputs provide three identical copies of the sum of the three inputs. However, a couple of semi-normalizations expand the capabilities of the module. In case I have only one signal patched to either of these three inputs, it will be multiplied by three. Let's take for example the green section below. So for example, if I patch Sapel's sample and hold output to one of these three inputs, I will obtain three equal copies of the signal that I can patch, for example, to Brainsaw's Volt per active input or to the wave folder level. All the three outputs are the same. The multiple is buffered, so it is especially useful for volt per octave signals where one cannot afford any voltage drop and must be sure to send the very same signal to different oscillators. If I patch two different signals to the inputs, for example the N plus one output and an LFO from Falistri, I can use them to modulate brains of speech. And as a result, I will obtain a complex modulation signal where every voltage is a result of the sum of a bipolar LFO and a completely unrelated series of quantized random voltages that roughly go from 0 to 7 volts. It can be especially useful to combine different stepped random voltages from Sapel, for example, the n plus 1 and the 2 to the nth power. By doing so, I will have a series of semitones coming from the 2 to the nth power output that, at a certain time, will jump by one or more octaves when they are summed to the voltages coming from the n plus 1 output. If I am combining two signals that are too hot for the circuit and might push the range a little bit further, I can take advantage of the minus 60B switch that attenuates by exactly 60B or half the signals that I patch the input. This will keep the output range much more controlled. As we said earlier, the 333 is also excellent to mix audio signals. So for example, I can use it to blend three different oscillators. We can clearly hear some distortions, so I can take advantage of the minus 60B switch and bring everything to a smoother and nicer level. And since I am using three different oscillators, I can use another section to multiply my volt per octave signal. So we have three sections that we can use independently to sum, distribute or even attenuate audio signals and CV. However, there are a couple of semi-normalization that can make everything way more fascinating. I started from the green section because it's the simplest one, but you can see that the yellow and the red ones have something extra. We have a dashed line that connects this output here to this input here. This stands for a semi-normalization. It means that the sum of this input here 
by default is also routed to this input here. And this one is routed to this input here. So if I patch my sample and hold to this section, I can see the red LED flashing. But if I patch it to one of the yellow inputs, I can see that now I am having this outputted by these outputs here and these outputs here because I have this output semi-normal to this input. If I patch a cable to this output here, the semi-normalization is still going on. However, if I patch a signal to this input, I will break the semi-normalization and I will use this section independently from this one. Since I have also this semi-normalization going on, if I patch my signal to the first input, I will obtain nine equal copies of the same signal. By just using those two semi-normalizations, then the 333 can become a 1 to 9 multiple, a 1 to 6 multiple, besides the default behavior 1 to 3 that we saw earlier. But there is more. Since I am patching a signal to the red section, I can listen to it from the yellow and the green one as well. And the same is true for this sum. But let's say that I want to sum four oscillators. If I patch the fourth oscillator to this input, I will break the semi-normalization. But if I patch it to the second input, this one will retain the semi-normalization and I will effectively sum four oscillators. And I can choose at which point to apply the minus 60B attenuation. So if I attenuate the signals at this stage, I will have this oscillator here sensibly louder than this one because these are attenuated, but this isn't. And if I activate also this attenuator, the fourth oscillator will be 60B lower than its output here, but this one will be 12 dB lower. Let's say that I want to add another oscillator. I can patch it here and so sum five signals. And keeping their level down by activating the last cascaded minus 6 dB switch. I have this sum semi-normal to the green section, so if I listen to that, I might even add a sixth oscillator and even a pink noise. Of course, if I take the signal from an earlier sum, I will only perceive the outputs of that section, but if I pick my grain section, I will also listen to the sums past the yellow and the red one. And I still have three identical copies of that signal. And by doing so, the 333 can become also a 7 to 1 mixer with minus 60B switches for attenuation. Speaking of switches, if I patch a signal to the red section and let it flow through the yellow and the green one, I might scale it by different amounts. So I might have a minus 6 dB at the red section, a minus 12 at the yellow one, and a minus 18, so three times lower at the green one. And now a couple of suggestions. If you want to use the sections independently, always remember to patch a cable to the first input. By doing so, this section will be completely detached from the previous ones. And if you are playing with CVs, always remember to check the position of the minus 60B switches, otherwise you would play quarter tones. <laughs>